Hello everyone, and welcome to a fun little tutorial we're gonna be doing today on how we can embed a command line tool within a GUI application such as an app kit or Swift UI app, and have that main app install the command line tool such that we can then use it within our application. So uh, some examples of tools that allow you to do this, one is the application BB Edit, which is a GUI app, but it also has this command line tool. And it gives you a variety of different things that you can do uh, from the command line tool. And a lot of it uh, in, ends up just opening up the particular uh, you know, document that you might want to open up within the main application. Uh, another example is GitUp, which is an application that I maintain in some <laughs> form of free time that I have. Uh, and basically, it allows you to op go to a, a, a Git directory and you can, or Git repository, and in that directory, you can then just call Git up and it'll open up that particular uh, Git repo in the main uh, GUI application, right? So there's various reasons that you may or, not, may or may not wanna have this. You can also install a completely custom command line tool that has nothing to do with the main application. It's really totally up to you, but it is a nice way to package it because you can just hand somebody a GUI application, and then they can install the command line tools directly from that application instead of having to install it via terminal somehow. So anyway, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and figure out how we can create one of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new macOS application. I'm gonna call it command me. And we're gonna use Swift UI for the interface, and we're gonna use AppKit app delegate for the lifecycle. Uh, we'll kind of talk about why I'm using this app delegate setup in um, a separate <laughs> uh, time, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you can use really anything. You could use totally app kit, you could use completely Swift UI. Um, but for me, this is just an easier setup uh, for this example. So, anyway, that's what we're setting it up with. Let's go ahead and create this project. Uh, let's blow this up to full screen here. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our main application to really just um, really just have a UI so that we can install the, app, uh, the command line tool. So to do that, uh, I wanna make a uh, content view and I'm gonna just go ahead and fix the frame so that it's uh, really just gonna be some kind of desired size. So we're gonna do width and height of 300. And really this just matches the standard window size that I was going to have regardless. The next setup we want is to create a text field here. So the text I'm gonna have is, uh, we'll just leave it as a placeholder for now. The button, we're going to go ahead and set it up with an action. And the action at the moment is going to do nothing, but it will really be the install action when we are done. And the text that I want here is just going to be install uh, tool. All right, so really not too much in the UI. Obviously, you could do the same in AppKit if you want to do it that way as well. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's talk about how we can actually create the command line tool. So we want to head over to our project and under targets, so under general targets, we have command me over here. Uh, what I want to do is hit the plus button on the bottom, which will allow me to add a target and then I need to add a new command line tool. So we're gonna go ahead and hit next on that. I'm gonna call this tool, be careful not to call it the same thing as your main application because it'll actually override a bunch of stuff that you have uh, that, so that's why I'm gonna call it tool for now. And we'll just hit return on that. All right, I can actually rename this tool and I'm gonna just rename it lowercase command me just because it matches the application name and that's uh, pretty standard to have all lowercase in the tool itself. The tool is created uh, or the command line tool is created as a Swift file so we have a main.swift file here and it's just going to say hello world and I'm, I'm just going to leave this as it is um, and that's what the tool that we're going to ship with this application. In the next tutorial we'll talk more about how we can uh, mess with that particular tool. Um, from here, I'm going to add two new files and I'm just going to really end up explaining what they do because they are kind of complex and I don't really want to spend all my time uh, just typing them out. So I'm going to install or rather drag in this install.sh script and I'm going to drop it into the tools section over here. So let's add that. And then um, I'm going to actually I just want to make sure that that was 
uh, okay, that was copied correctly. Then I want to have these guys over here, and I'm going to just add them into the main uh, files over here. When I go to add this Objective-C file, it's going to ask me to create a bridging header, and yes, I do want to create a bridging header, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so now that I've gone ahead and added these files into the project, let's talk about what they do. So the install.sh script is just a standard script, shell script that you would run in terminal. And uh, what you see here is really just the language of shell script. So uh, what we have here is we have an argument. So two arguments, $1.2, which are we're going to assign to toolpath and install path. And what the toolpath is going to represent is where the tool is located within the application bundle that we're creating here. And the install path is where I want to install the tool too. So that's also going to be passed into this install.sh script. I could uh, hard code those values directly into here if I wanted, but the script is a little bit more generic. And I'm actually just taking this uh, directly from the GitHub open source code that we have. Um, with that, I'm getting the installation directory uh, path. So that's what this make directory is going to do. And the dash P is just going to create it if necessary. So if the path already exists, then it's going to leave it alone. Then once we've done that, I'm going to create a link between the tool path, which is within my application and the install path. And that just means that from the install path, um, there's basically we're going to install this into our uh, local uh, executable directory in terminal or where terminal sees um, standard command line. So like where you see CD and where you see LS, things like that, that you would type in terminal. We want to install a link into one of those directories so that it picks up that link and then terminal will be able to see our command as well. So that's what we're doing here is we're just setting a link between our standard user bin directory that we have uh, in, are installing the application in and then that will be pointing to the actual command line tool that we have within the application. All right, so enough of that. Let's talk about this other thing that I put in here, which is called tool installer. And the reason I'm just going to put this in is because it's all Objective-C code. And the reason it's Objective-C code is because the command that we actually need to use to do this is not available in Swift. Uh, it's explicitly marked as not available in Swift. And so I have to write this or at least part of it within Objective-C. So uh, it's also just easier to use Objective-C to do these a lot of these things, so uh, it's worth it. All right, so we just have a class called tool installer. There's one command on it, which is a class method called install. And what this is going to do is really the meat of all of the things that uh, we are going to do in this application or this tutorial. So to kick us off, right, the install method is uh, I'm just defining a bunch of string constants. One is to that install script that we have right here that I just talked about. The other one is called uh, is to the tool name, which is that command me tool that we have in our application. And then here is where we're going to install the tool. So this is going to be our install path, and we're going to install it in slash user slash local slash bin, and the tool name, which will be command me, will be put in that place. All right, so here's where all the fun tricky bits come, is that to, in order to do this, we need system authorization, right? Uh, if you even were to do this in Finder, for example, if you navigated to this path, in order to install something into that uh, directory or also to, to use the script that we want to use, uh, we need uh, basically admin or system authorization, right, to do any of these actions. And so what we're going to use is the authorization framework to actually allow us to run the install script, which is something you can't do, uh, well, A, if you're in the App Store, and B, you just can't do this without um, higher privileges, right? So we are going to get those privileges and we're going to actually ask the user to enter their uh, system password so that they can install this tool. So from here, we're using authorization create, and authorization create is just uh, the first thing that you need to use to uh, try to get authorization status. It just tells you whether or not you can do it at all, and so uh, authorization create will give us back a status if that uh, fails. There really shouldn't be any reason that this should fail if you are uh, an admin on the machine. So once this succeeds, we are checking against error authorization success. If that succeeds, this is where we try to get the authorization rights to actually perform um, the, the, uh, the, the 
well, the <laughs> to actually run this the script that we're going to run, right? To in, to run the install.sh script. So to do that, uh, we create this authorization items and authorization item. We can kind of uh, dive into this guy here. So it's really just a struct that has a few different things: name, value, length, value, and flags. And for our purposes, we are just trying to say that we want the ability to execute something, and that something is the install script. And the rest of the parameters we're just setting to zero. Then uh, we want to create these authorization rights. And if we kind of just dive into what that is, uh, it's not really going to show me where that is, but here we go. We can see that there's account, and then the number of items that we're uh, deriving here. So all that really means is that we have one item and so that's what we define one and then we pass in the item uh, here as well all right from here in authorization copyrights this is where we actually ask for all of the authorizations we need to run this this script and if i uh, dive into one of these uh, we can actually kind of see uh, what some of these things will do so um, if i go over to information here um, and I don't actually see where that section is, but uh, oh, here's the documentation I was wanting to look for. So in the authorization copyrights um, call, there's some documentation on how you want to do this. And uh, basically that it says, there are three main re reasons to use this function. The first reason is to pre-authorize rights by specifying the, and then it gives these three flags that we want to specify. And that's what these three flags are here. And so this will give us the rights uh, to actually uh, run the, the, the authorization privileges that we need to install the shell script. If that succeeds, then this is where we start getting the information of where our paths are located for all these things. So this step right here is saying that we want to access the shared support path inside of our main application bundle. Now I haven't actually done the important work to do this yet. So before I forget, let's hop over to our project and in the command line tool uh, or actually in the command me target so this is the application bundle target if we go to build phases uh, I want to go to the plus button up here and we're going to add a new copy files phase and what this is going to do is copy the command line tools into the directory that I want so uh, here's copy files and the destination that I want to copy these to is called shared support. There's really just a bunch of predefined locations for certain things. And in this example, uh, I want to put these in shared support. The two things that I want to put in shared support are the install script. So install.sh. And we also want the command me application to be there as well. So we're just making a dedicated location that we're going to access these shared resources and so here's command me and the install script and these are going to be put into the shared support directory inside of our application bundle all right let's hop back over to the tool installer to kind of finish up our logic here so now that we have that shared support path uh, we are appending both the installer name and the tool name right so that is the two things that i just copied into that path so we have a path to the installer and a path to the tool all right, so let's talk about the authorization execute with privileges command. And this guy, let's just go ahead and dig into what this has. So it has the authorization ref that we created earlier. There's a path to the tool that we're going to execute, right? So we're trying to execute this particular tool with privileges. And then uh, we have some options. We're just going to pass in default options for that. And then we have arguments. These arguments are what we're passing into the 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 tool that we're going to be calling, right? So this path, the tool, these are the arguments that we're going to be passing into that. And then there's a communications pipe that we can get and we can use to see what the output of the, the tool was. So in our install script, we're actually going to print out an okay if it completely succeeds. And that output is going to be piped into a communications pipe if we provide it. So now that you have all that, um, we're using the authorization, uh, authorization that we originally created we're using the installer path that we had up here, right? Then uh, we're passing default flags. The arguments are these things that we created up here. And these are the tool path and the uh, uh, the installation path, right? And remember in our shell script, and I'm just going to hop back to that, right? These are the two arguments that we're passing in to the shell script, right? The tool path and the, ins and the installation path. 
So that's the arguments that we're passing in here. Then the last thing is that we have this communication pipe and I alluded to this just a bit, but we are using this so that the output of the install.sh script and the output that we expect to have is that we're gonna print okay if everything makes it to the end, right? And we wanna know that everything made it to the end, so we are just validating that it actually uh, made it to the end by providing this communication pipe, which is going to uh, basically this command, when it runs the install script, is going to write its output to this communication pipe, which gives us the ability to read what the output output was of our script. So if this also succeeds, <laughs> then what we want to do is a very last check, and you know, maybe you could think this is overkill, but uh, we we do want to make sure the script ultimately runs so that we can tell the user whether it succeeds or not. So in this case, uh, we're just making this small little character buffer. We're going to read from the communication pipe the, uh, basically we just want to get the output. So we're putting the output of whatever is in the communication pipe, piping that and storing it into the buffer. And then the buffer is going to uh, store whatever that output was from the communication pipe. And the count represents how many characters there actually were in uh, from what it read. And uh, if there was, uh, I'm only making this buffer 128. And the reason I'm doing this is just, it was actually what we had in uh, the GitHub application, but also, that we only expect there to be the okay output. I don't really need the buffer to be any larger. It could actually even be smaller than 128, but regardless, uh, the buffer size is just what it is. And if you were to read more than 128 characters, you would want, um, you would want there to be some kind of way of accumulating or sort of looping through all of the, the output that you're reading from this communication pipe. But I'm only assuming that I want the okay status to come back. So. I'm kind of cheating maybe a little bit in this example. Once we have that, we create data out of the buffer that we created here with the length of how much we read. And then here we're going to create the NS string with data. We're using ASCII encoding because we're using a character, so it's gonna be ASCII encoded. And lastly, we check to see if the result of this was what we expected. So if the, what we read out is not equivalent to OK. That means that the install script did not finish its installation. And so we should change our status to be something other than authorization success, right? At this point, we already are. Our status, right, that we've been carrying along for this whole time uh, is successful. So we only need to change it if we are not successful. And lastly, down here, we return if the status is actually successful. That is our bool indicator here. And uh, you know, maybe you'd use a result type in Swift, but uh, in Objective-C, I kept it simple, just saying the bool is that we had a success, and uh, so if it's yes, it's gonna be success. If it's no, it failed. So now that we've got all that done, let's hop back to our app delegate here. Actually, I'm gonna go to, uh, yeah, we'll just put this in the, the app delegate for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a structure here for our uh, app state. So um, actually, let's do this in the content view. Maybe that just is a cleaner place. I could make a new file, but uh, let's just go ahead and make that here. So we'll create app state, and this is just gonna be our way of actually running that tool. Uh, it's going to be what we're providing into the content view. So uh, the app state is gonna be an observable object, which is a Swift UI concept, and it allows the content views to observe changes on what is published from the app state. So in this example, we have really a very uh, bare bones sort of implementation. We're just going to publish text and it's going to be string. And our initializer for this, uh, we'll just say that the text is testing. And then uh, I just want to add a function that will run our install script or our install tool uh, command. So from here, we want to run uh, tool, dot, uh, tool installer, and I forgot that we didn't actually add this to our bridging header, so let's go ahead and bop over here. Um, we want to go to the command me bridging header. We're going to import our uh, tool installer.h, and this will allow us to use that within our Swift code. 
let's hop back over to content view. Uh, we should have this now available to us. So we can just call tool installer dot install. Uh, is that what I call it? Is it install? Yeah. Um, so hopefully there's only one command there. So we are going to install and then depending on the result of this, right, we want to uh, change the text to represent whether we were successful or not. So if uh, it's true, then it's a success. If it's false, then we had a failure. All right, so with that out of the way, let's add in uh, a little bit here to our content view. So our content view wants some way on to hold that state. And to do this, we create a state object for the app state. And it's just going to pass in app state like that. All right, so a few things we got to fix up. Uh, we got to fix in our little initializer here. And then we also need to fix up our app delegate uh, so that we just get the warning here. So fix this up, pass in, and we want to have our separate app state on this example. So uh, let's do var app state, app state. All right, and I'll pass that in to here. And let's go ahead and, uh, what am I missing here? Uh, okay, let's go ahead and run this. And, uh, oh, I guess we're not targeting Mac OS 11, so let me just fix that up here. So in our command me under general, I'm gonna just bump the deployment target so that we're at Mac OS 11. And let's run this again. second we should have our application all right so here's our application we have our placeholder text for now we'll call install tool and that didn't actually do anything that's because I didn't actually wire this up so let's uh, actually use our app state that we had here so we had app state dot install tool and we should also put in our text here to be our app states text all right let's try and run that again all right, and here we are, we have our testing. Now that's actually taking the value from the app state. Let's call install tool. And we actually had a failure on that. And I guess the one thing that I forgot was that we were actually in a, um, I don't think this is the right uh, issue that is being reported, but uh, the issue that I'm gonna run into is that this application is actually by default uh, uses entitlements and I don't want to use entitlements. So um, to do that, we can go into our build settings. So in the command me application, I'm gonna search for entitlements and I'm just gonna delete this entry so that it's not using any code signing. All right, uh, not code signing, but uh, <laughs> I meant, meant to say entitlements uh, for that. All right, now that we are not in a sandbox environment, we can go ahead and hit the install tool. We can type in our password we can hit return and we have success. Now the true test of whether we have success or not is going into terminal and seeing whether or not this was success. So if you didn't go ahead and create a new window, you wanna create a new session just so it loads in all the uh, standard things uh, that we just, now that we installed the tool, we need to actually know that uh, we have to pick that up by creating a new session. So create a new terminal window. Um, and what we're gonna do here is we're going to call the tool. So the tool is called command me. I run command me and we can see we get hello world, which is perfect. That's exactly what we had in this main.swift application. So that's everything you need to install a command line tool from a GUI application. And in the next video, we'll go much further diving into how we can communicate between the command line tool and the main application itself. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.